Ladies and gentlemen, we're back with a special guest today, oh, and yeah. it's our 11-year anniversary. Uh, they're, if they're listening, they can't see this, but it's 11 on your T-shirt, yeah, and we were both wondering what that is. Well, I got one in my gift basket <laughs> in my hotel, and I thought 11, I, I could, but now I know. I, I could have put it, it together. It rhymes with heaven. Okay. Ooh. I don't know. Uh-huh. That's a, okay. I like, like I think. We, we, the, okay. So for those listening and you just heard a third voice, it, it wasn't the Holy Spirit, but pretty close. Uh, oh. We have Pastor Banning Liebscher from Jesus Culture Church, Sacramento. Ooh. We're excited you're here. You're speaking all weekend. Uh, yeah. I'm stoked to be here. I'm yeah. stoked to uh, not only be preaching at church, but be on the podcast, which a big fan, big fan. I, 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 I actually genuinely love the title of this yeah. podcast and, yeah. uh, Thank you. And yeah, I'm, I'm a big Instagram fan yeah. of yours. So I'm excited yeah. to sit and see if we can argue. Can we argue for, is this an, is this where we're kind of count pointer count for 45 minutes? This is uh, a formal debate. <laughs> yeah. So you throw out a topic and we're we just going to go gonna after it. Go after. We did end times last podcast. Actually. So that, that was sad. <laughs> we did yes. end times. And sexuality and identity. Yeah. Was, so th- those will already be out by the time I people... I appreciate are, you letting me jump in on yeah. after those. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was a lot of fun. The end time would be like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I did just ask, do you guys know who Corey Russell is? He, he was at IHOP uh, for Corey Russell. I know the name. He was at International House of Prayer, which they've done a lot of stuff on end times. And I literally was with him the other day. I'm like, so... Uh, tell me what you think the mark of the beast is, because I think maybe I need to get brushed up a little bit on what all this. <laughs> what about Phil Manginelli talks about a lot. He's like, the first couple chapters are this, and it <laughs> totally. switches to this. This is cyclical, but this is actually. Yeah, I'm like, I can't follow this. I yeah. can't follow it. Yeah. So I had uh, there was a, a a guy that I really respected. He said, uh, Revelation happens every generation. I'm like, right. all right, there we go. Right. So there, right. that's what I'll just go with that one in. We'll move I, on. Yeah. smart when you yeah. say it. Yeah. 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 Okay, say that. so let me introduce. Okay. Guys, I've, totally de- I've already derailed your you totally podcast, have. my is, bad. We're going to have to start over. Okay, awesome old youth pastor at our church, runs theology uh, department for us. I'm, I'm the lead pastor along with my wife, Lisa. And then we've got Banning Liebscher, my good friend. We've been friends for, I think it's almost been 20 years. Is that crazy? Think, yeah. We it's did, been a while. We did some youth camps together yep. that we had you come out. Uh, was able to go down and visit you in um, Redding, I, California a few I times. Could, I could tell you, I remember the sermon the first time he came at camp. Is that not weird? Uh, but Okay, what is the points you remember? I he remember. talked about a cookie, and if you eat it, it's going to be different than if someone explains it to you. It's revelation versus information. He Ooh. talked to... Uh, yeah. uh, the one I she, remember yeah, in camp was when he said... You, uh, Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and yeah. Jesus said, yeah. you are the light of the world. Hallelujah. Yes. I remember kids getting healed. Yes, we had some miracles. Yeah, I, remember, I do too. I, I, really I, that's cool. what I remember at that camp as kids getting healed. I remember a kid that could walk, couldn't, hit someone's knee and he had to walk upstairs. And I, I remember a handful of ones, yeah. I also had a student um, almost choke on a red vine and, and, and kind of semi vomited up on me at the same time. <laughs> same exact camp. So a lot was happening. Well, listen, we got Cody out of this whole package, out of this yep, whole relationship. This Cody show. is with us and all of his kids and family. Yeah, and so, okay, just to... For people who may not know you, you're kind of famous, but in case yeah, people true. don't know you, you uh, had a movement, a youth movement called Jesus Culture, and there's been um, albums, and you had conferences and all that, and then you guys launched a church in Sacramento yep. called Jesus Culture, yep. and you guys just launched Jesus Culture San Diego Church yep. out of that, which is amazing. You've written a few books. One of them made um, top three books of the It was book of the year, actually. You were the winner. <laughs> In 2018, for his book Rooted, which is a real honor, my, my list. Yes, thank you. That's a real. Is was that your Oprah? first book? Mm-hmm. No, no. Okay, no. I was going to say that's a high standard for your first that's book. A, no, every book after that has to. Right. Yeah. And totally. then your most recent book is called Th- Three Three Mile Walk, Three Minute Miracle. No, it's it's something, like that, something like that. Something <laughs> three mile, like that. Three Mile Walk. Yes. So far, you've done a great job at introducing very me. Very powerful book on courage, which is so needed in this time. So anyway, and you're my good friend. And we've done, you know, gone to some uh, events together, uh, and it's been great. So that's who Banning is in my world. Thank you. It's yeah. Great. Yeah. Great to be here. Okay. So you want to know what the topic is today, guys? Go ahead. We're going to talk about fathering and um, it, spiritual fathering, even though all of us have had natural children. I have a right? daddy. Yes. <laughs> that's what that means. By the way, adorable. Yeah. Are we allowed Me to talk or about my daughter? Your daughter. Okay. And um, T- Tell them what I do. Tell well, I just get, right. I, I literally just get random videos and photos right. of your, with no explanation at all. Just, yeah. 
I get there's no explanation. It's just a video will show up of this kid. <laughs> I'll a text and I from sense Matt. that you're a little low. It's uh, just a video that yeah. shows up. So yeah. and what's fun is is your mom is crazy she about is. that girl. Oh, yeah. Crazy about that girl. I get a so. FaceTime every day. Yeah, well done. Well yeah. done in producing some uh some grandkids for your parents. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so, I, do, I do what I can. <laughs> I do what I can. Yeah. Just play my part <laughs> in all this. <laughs> Yeah, my, my pleasure. <laughs> uh, so with that, uh, we're not talking about natural children, <laughs> but we are talking about um, spiritual children. And then the topic I want to talk about is like mentors and getting uh, spiritual fathers and mothers in our lives, how important it is, why it's difficult and the need for that. And uh, just talking through some of that. Uh, I did have a scripture I wanted to read. I love this story. This is crazy. This is Absalom. Second, Second Samuel eighteen eighteen, uh, during his lifetime, Absalom, who was you know the king who tried to usurp his father David, who's a really bad guy, Absalom had built a monument to himself in the king's valley, for he said, "I have no son to carry on my name." He he named the monument after himself, and it's known as Absalom's monument to this day, which I just think is so ironic. He has no sons so he builds himself a yeah, monument yeah um and then of course in first corinthians chapter four paul says i'm not writing these things to shame you but to warn you as my beloved children for even if you had ten thousand others to teach you about christ you only have one spiritual father i became your father in christ jesus when i preached the good news to you and uh, spiritual fathers, the idea is kind of mentioned. Peter mentions uh, that. John mentions spiritual children, different things, places in the scripture. So I just think that one of the things that's transformed my life is having a spiritual uh, father, uh, different people speak into my life. And it's been transformative. And I don't think I'd be here today without it. And I actually think every church going person needs that not just like a sermon preacher you need a preacher a pastor but they need somebody that's involved in their life so anyway throw it out give me your guys' thoughts <laughs> when it comes to the end times no yeah. just kidding. <laughs> when it comes to the end times yeah. and sexuality can we go back to the uh, <laughs> <laughs> well no let me just ask a question because i was thinking about this today there's kind of a paradox with uh spiritual fathers and mentors because it's like i think about my i think about my daughter who's two something years old and as she gets older, especially in her young years, she's going to need a lot of mentoring, like, and just like learning how to do things. Yeah, sure. And that's a lot of like brand new Christians who are babes in Christ, if yeah. you will. And the older she gets, the less she's going to need like my direction on all the minute details. But at the same time, it seems to me like a like spiritual maturity also would say that as we grow in the Lord, we realize more of the need for mentors. Yeah. Um, can you maybe just talk about this? How does spiritual mentors, spiritual fathers, pastors, whatever that looks like, whatever we want to call them, how does that help in the process of maturity in the life of a Christian? Like, what what would be the reason someone needs guidance in their lives? Don't 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 they have the Holy Spirit, yeah. Pastor Manning? Don't they already have Him? You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, what's would, the role there? I would say even as we mature, though, we. Uh, we, we always need encouragement at some level. So much of this stuff is just somebody who's actually just encouraging you. I mean, it's not just, uh, uh, let me give you all the wisdom that I have, but I, I would have, you know, I, I think, well, let me just first say this. I think this topic is, is, is maybe the great need in the hour. Right? I, I think that we have spent so much time building programs and building structures and we haven't built people to actually become fathers and mothers in the body of Christ. Right. And so we keep building structures that are trying to meet the needs of all of the, the people in our world that are not actually being uh, mentored or discipled or fathered or mother. <laughs> Right. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a there's a there's a drum beat going on now, right? Yeah, I don't know if anyone can hear it, but we got worship it. practice going. Until we start talking like this. Until, yeah, it's like right when I start talking. I, when I was I, a do teen. Do I need to wrap this? Because all right, guys, lay it down, beat. I I think it's the I think it's the great need. Honestly, I think both with the harvest coming in, I think with uh, Paul throughout his letters is like is going after maturity in the lives of people. He's confused when they're not maturing. Like his, and his whole language is maturing. And I think maturity is connected to fathers and mothers, mentors, whatever mm. you want to call them, yeah. pouring into us. And, and I would say this, as you get older, 
I don't, I, I think one, I think I always will always need encouragement. Right. <laughs> always. Yeah. I always need a perspective that is, um, you know, we have blind spots in our life. So I will always need somebody who can come and go, you got a blind spot and the whole nature of the blind spot is you can't see it. So when you get older, it's not like all of a sudden I have a 360 degree view of my life. Yeah. Um, but I also think that God actually gives our oversight insight. I think when you actually have, um, I think the biblical concept of oversight, mm -hmm. the Lord actually gives insight to those that he's given oversight mm -hmm. into our lives. So this is the whole thing of like, well, as I get older, do I, do I no longer need the word of knowledge? Do I no longer need the word of wisdom? Do yeah. I know? Like there are words of wisdom that's actually a spiritual gift that comes to us. It's like, I needed that. I, you know, even as I get, it doesn't matter how old you get, I need people who are speaking wisdom into my life. Yeah. You, you know, if that yeah. makes sense. And so I, I think it's a, I think it's a massive need. And I think it's something that we probably need to talk about more because I'm not, it's a massive sacrifice to actually be a mother or father. And I think we got to call people to that. I think there's a lot of immature believers in our midst because yeah, and we seen, haven't raised up fathers and mothers. We've seen a lot of ministries uh, since COVID and, and prior to that, but like the pressure of life, pressure of ministry or whatever, and then personal, personal problems that people have don't get addressed. And we've seen ministries tumble and I know that we've talked yeah. uh, in private conversations about some of these things and gone, man, where was there, where was the mentor or the pastor or the spiritual father to step in and go, Hey, this seems like you're not doing okay. And to try to rescue before somebody shipwrecks their life, you know, yeah. and we don't want that. We want to see mm -hmm. people flourish. Um, I do think that in a Western, our Western culture, we're so bent on uh, fixing it ourselves that we just kind of have this idea, like, I'm going to get better. I can just plow through this. And so we, we don't do anything on um, mental health, self-care, uh, Sabbath, rest. Like, we don't uh, do that. And we're resistant to also having outside voices speak into us and go, hey, you should slow down. You shouldn't do all this. Uh, we just don't. It's foreign to us. And so I think that those things become a problem in our life. And that points to the need of having somebody in our life. Oh, it's independence. It's just the Western, yeah. the Western, the Western mindset is a very independent right. kind of concept. It's, you know, not in the Middle East, not, right. not across Africa, not in, you know, Latin America, but in, in this Western church, it's full on just an independent thing. You should, you don't tell me what to do. I should be able to uh, figure it all out on my own. You should be able to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. It's just that concept of like needing people is a sign of weakness. And so I just, I'm not going to be weak. I don't mm -hmm. need people. This right. is just all ingrained in us and we don't even know it. Yeah. And the Bible is a whole different picture. It's like a right. completely different picture. So let me ask you this question, man, uh, for those that are listening uh, on our, at our church or abroad, um, if they're a leader, how many people do you think somebody that's in leadership Christian leadership can truly take on as, you know, to, to be a spiritual, like mentor voice to. And then, um, after that also, I would like to talk about like, how do we just every a average person going to church, how do they find that person and stuff? But how, do, but how, how many, you know, the three of us work for, for a church. How do we, how many people can we literally I, take on besides the people we preach? I think not a lot. I mean, I think obviously, I, I think this is why it's a unique relationship. Yeah. I mean, I guess we look at Jesus, he had 12 and he had 70, but he really had three. Right. I mean, there were three that he really let in at a deep level. This is even when Paul says, when Paul says you don't have many fathers, you have many teachers, many not many fathers. Like that verse is constantly being used as we need more fathers, but it's not actually, Paul was not saying this in a negative. He said, there's a, like I'm, he was trying to say, you need to listen to me. I'm one of the relationships. Yeah. Like he's like, like you don't have a ton of fathers. I'm one of them. Yeah. And therefore you probably need to listen to me is what he's talking about. And, and so I think those type of relationships where you really allow somebody in your life, because this is the concept of walking with people. It's not, we have this concept that somehow it's, it, we just have a very Western education system, which is a professor gets up front. We get a hundred people in a room. He teaches you what he knows and he goes home. Mm -hmm. Uh, a, a counselor sits and um, doesn't really have any relationship with, the clients he has or she has, and I see six a day. None, none of that's bad, right? But 
but but this is a different concept in the Bible. It's like, no, you're coming into my life. This is what Paul says when he tells Timothy. He says, Timothy, I want you to go and remind them of how I lived wow. yeah. while I taught. He doesn't even tell Timothy to go remind them of the things he taught. He said, go remind them of how I lived while I taught because Timothy was with him while he was living. Mm -hmm. Like he saw how he interacted. He saw how he prayed. He saw how he lived out this stuff. And so you can, there's only so many people that I can really say you have access. Like I I am bringing you into access in my life and with my family at that level. Yeah. And, And that's why I do think Jesus had the three, the 12, the 70. Right. Because there's only a handful that you can actually do that with. That's why I think right now, how many are in this area? You told me uh, 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 just over three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand. So right now, this 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 is the math that I don't think we're doing in the body of Christ, and this is why I think this issue is so big. If we're praying for a harvest, and let's just say, uh, let's say ten percent. <laughs> you ready to do the math? I don't have a phone on me. <laughs> let's just say ten percent. This is not even like. Right. We're just like, if 10% of this region got saved, yeah. 30,000 new people get saved, 30,000 new people. Let's say that you have a ratio of one to five, like one person that can, re- which is a, which I'm telling you five people that you're really actually right. discipling is a pretty, yeah. like that's a, that's not a small thing, right? One person to five. What's that ratio of how many new fathers and mothers we need right now? Six, no, no, s- 600. Six. 6,000. We would thank you very much, by the way. So this is, this is the crazy thing. If just 10%, if a harvest manifested in the Tri-Cities area of 10%, it would mean we need 6,000 new people, new, not counting the ones that aren't doing it, like not the ones that are in the church already, new fathers and mothers who are actively engaged in the life of five people. Yeah. Wow. That's 10%. And so that's 6,000 new. This is, I think this is the great need of the hour right now is people that would actually say, I am going to be a spiritual father or mother, and I am going to uh, invest my life and walk with people at a deep way and let them in. And that's why I, I don't think that that depth, this is why, and we probably would have a whole nother podcast on this. And I'd love to actually hear your thoughts about this. This is why I don't think online as much as everybody's saying right. the church is going online, I'm like, I don't think the church can go online. It is life on life. And and how can I fully disciple you if I don't see you and how you interact with your wife? If I don't see when you're stressed, mm-hmm. if I don't see what pops out of you when pressure comes, if I don't see your connectivity to other people, if right. I don't see, like, if I'm not walking with you, right. how can I actually, actually father or mother you? How can I actually disciple you? Yeah. If I'm not actually walking with you, mm-hmm. and that's and that's why right now ten percent, which I'm imagining you're believing for more than ten percent of sure, yeah, right. But ten percent is six thousand new people that are currently not engaged in fathering or mothering five people. Yeah, I think I, I even that's think okay. about like I can. Um, I was facing my buddy today who is in the military. He's on the East Coast, <clears throat> and we were just catching up. And like, we can have somewhat of a relationship over FaceTime, but I, I literally cannot raise my daughter if I'm living on the East coast. And I think the same goes like, like for church. I do think you're talking about the Western mindset. I do think one of the biggest problems is, I I mean, I alluded to this earlier, but when I'm convinced that people view church like creamer and coffee, it's like, oh, this will just help the coffee taste a little bit better. This will help my spiritual life grow a little bit more. And it's like, when you at the same time join a relationship with Jesus and God, you join the kingdom. When you join the father, you join the family. And the most common way Paul talks about the church in the New Testament is he calls them brothers yes. and sisters. Yes. And so we have an actual obligation. And I think it was probably easier for first and second second century Christians to view it that way because of the immense persecution. Like this is all they had. And if, you know, and so like they had to take care of each other. They had to be with each other. They had to gather with each other. They had to get encouraged with each other. But we don't, we don't have some intense persecution for the Christian church. So you can just kind of watch on YouTube. You can kind of, you know, you can kind of read your books, listen to your podcasts and you, you don't feel an obligation to help take care of your brother, your, your actual brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes. Um, and so you can kind of get away with well, it uh, in that it, sense. And this is first Peter five, five, when, when he says, submit yourselves to your elders mm-hmm. and be submitted to one another. Yes. I mean, this, 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 I mean, the, the, this verse, submit yourselves to your elders, submit yourselves to one another. 
if you go do a study a, a study on that word submit, it's hardcore. Right. Like it's it's hardcore. In fact, I when I when I went and did a study on that word, I, it was actually offensive to me a little bit. As an American, <laughs> I was like, I mean, it's full on obey. Right, right, right. right. Uh, like, like it is a hardcore word yeah. that I was like. It sounds oh. like it opens the door to like oppressive. Yes. You know. Yes, absolutely. Like, like, yeah, but go look at it. Go that word. And so, so you can't do that stuff no. sitting on, just listen to podcasts. Listen, I, I, I gotta tell you everybody. And, and listen, I, I love Stephen Furtick. He's not your pastor. <laughs> right. He's not your spiritual father. He can be somebody that you're receiving yeah, from, right. but he's just not right. He, you, you cannot do what first Peter five, five is telling you to do. Yeah. In that type of context. And First right. Peter 5, 5 is very clear. You need to have your life submitted. Yeah. It needs to be submitted to covering, and it needs to be submitted to community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and that means that people are involved in your life, and they're involved you, in your business. You no. Can tell you no. Can tell you no. Absolutely. Can, can Absolutely. Okay, so let me, let me um, on a real practical note, I know that for me, I've always probably uh, played catch up in a sense of, Man, I don't think I'm ready to be a pastor yet, but I was a pastor. I don't know if I'm ready to be. You actually encouraged me, Benny, in one of our conversations, to kind of step into that role a little bit more and just, you know, be more of a father figure in that sense. And um, so I think that there's practical things that people feel like, oh, I don't I don't have what it takes to do that. You know, I don't know if I'm mature enough yeah. to lead other people. So I think there, you know, I think it's system wide, and I mean that in the church. Like, yeah, of we course. all have to be pouring into somebody, have people pouring into us. But so, you know, some of the qualities that I think of that do qualify, somebody has to have some basic biblical knowledge, and I think they also have to just have gotten past a, a certain level of selfishness in their life, where they have the capacity to to then care for other people, but maybe there's some other qualifications and things, but I think, I think more people can do it than they, than think. I I would, I would say this first. I think one, everything we're doing is simply, Hey, I'm running after Jesus. Come with me. So I I think we need to just clarify a little bit. Like, like sometimes I think the, the, the mentorship and fathering that I'm turned off by is somebody that's like, I got so much wisdom. Let me just give it to you. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like somebody just wants to sit and and just kind of like, just tell me all the amazing wisdom they have. Uh, What we're talking about is like, dude, we're going after God. I'm letting him heal. I'm letting him transform my life. I'm letting him grow my marriage. I'm going deeper in the things of the word. I'm like, you know, and even when I don't know, I'm like, I don't know. Let's go. Like, like I don't have it. I don't have, I don't have an answer for that. Let's go figure it out. It's that type of Mm. concept where I'm like, this is like, come with me. This is Paul, you know, like imitate me as I imitate Christ. I'm following Jesus. Come with me in this pursuit. Yep, so I think at some level, I'm like, are you going after Jesus? Just invite people with you. Yeah. Right. But I would say this, that so we're so many of us are intimidated. I agree. Like, I don't know. I, I, what am I supposed to tell people? What am I doing? Like, well, one, I think you just start with encouragement. So I would just say this real quick. And for people listening right now, this is absolutely the place to start. Yeah. Go be Barnabas to Paul. Yeah. So, so I just think the concept is this, I, I need permission. So awesome. Big example. I need permission to actually speak into your life in any significant way. Like I need you to actually invite me in. Right. Um, if you don't, then I, then, then I don't come in because it's control. Yeah. So, so my point is this is whoever you're going to walk with, they have to invite you in. Mm -hmm. Like this is just this the person being mentored has the, to invite. The, the per, yes, the, hey, they have to. They have to. They have to open their heart to you. If you don't open your heart to me, and That's this good. is part of the problem, is I think I just got to come and kick your door in to give you my opinion. Like I got an opinion about how you should live, whether you've invited me in to talk to you or not. I'm going to give it to you. Right. Okay. But my point is this: so you have to invite me in. You know, you don't have to give me permission to do. Encourage you. Mm. And this is the thing right there. That's great. Where I'm like, I, I, like you have to give me permission to actually draw close to you and give you input. Yeah. You do not have to give me permission because I can I can text you, I can send you money when I hear you're going on a missions trip, I can uh, I can encourage you, I can like and this is what I think has to be the first step. Yeah. The first step is this: when when I feel like the Lord's put somebody on my heart, I first am like. Um, it would be an example. This is probably a, a, a I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. It's not stuff we talk about a lot, but I'll tell you. There's a girl named Lindy Kofer. She's married now, Lindy Conant. She's a worship leader with YWAM in Southern California. I was in a room 
And uh, I was just hearing her lead worship for this little tiny gathering. I felt like the Lord said, I want you to adopt her. I'm like, okay, well, she has not like, she has it like, the, so, so I just said, I'm going to be your biggest supporter. I'm going to be your big, I'm going to encourage you. I would tell, oh, we were connected. She's, she's a spiritual daughter of a friend of mine. And I would just send her really encouraging words. I would listen to her worship and just go to like a new album that came out. There were just little things that were coming up. She had posted online. We supported this thing. She had, she was getting married and she, you know, their YWAM. And so she was like, Hey, um, uh, does anybody know where I can get maybe a hair? haircut for a decent price, you know, yeah. is there hairstyles? And I just got hold of her. I said, Hey, what are you needing? You know? Yeah. And, and it was like, she goes, and so we paid for her to get her hair done and her makeup done for her wedding. I'm just saying it was this type of thing. Like she's on my radar, right? She's on my radar. Yeah. And I think if we had more people in the church yeah. who said, I don't need to speak, I don't need to correct you or direct you at this moment. Right. I just need to encourage you. I just wow. need to encourage you. That's really good. And you're on my radar now. And yeah. hey, I saw that you're going to youth camp. Honestly. Yeah. Done. I'm going to pay for that. Whatever else it is, things like that. Does that make sense? That's so so a lot of people are like, well, I don't know how to correct. I don't know how to direct. I don't know how to give wisdom. And then a whole bunch of other things, in all honesty, people would go like, uh, 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 Becky Johnson is somebody in our world that I would be a spiritual father to. And she'll ask me a, a, the, a theological question. I'm like, I have no idea. But I am connected to somebody who does. Right. Call Phil. Call Phil. It's honestly, it's, yeah. I'm yeah. like, get a hold of Phil. I'm going to give you access to the resources I have because I don't have all the answers, but I am connected to people that know a lot more than I do. Right. So I'm going to, does this make sense? I'm saying yeah. we've got to take off that thing that somehow I have to be able to give you wisdom and correction and direction and, and, and all I this stuff. So I'm like, let's just encourage you. And then, yeah, and I think people begins. are super hungry for that. And I think it will, people's hearts will be open to say, man, you've just been a big cheerleader. Would you just, of course, you know, when, when I'm in my crisis moment, who, who, do, when you're, when you're going through something, it's like, who do I want to go to? I, I don't want to go to somebody who's <laughs> totally. pointed out all my flaws. Totally. I want to go to somebody who's actually been praying for me, supporting me, you know, yeah, all, all of that. Uh, just a quick story. Um, as you're saying that it reminded me years ago, there was a guy who I met, who went to our church for, church for a short season. And um, this is just a personal thing, yeah. okay? But I hate being on my phone during church. And it, it's, I just, okay. Yeah. And he te- he texts me like three times, ping, 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 ping. And it's just sitting on the seat next to me. And honestly, normally, unless it's my wife or like a family member, I just will like, I'm gonna wait till after service to check my phone. But, you know, three in a row, I'm like, <laughs> so, and he's there in the service. So I'm so I open it, you know, and and it's not like a sanctuary of five thousand. No, 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 no. It's all the way across. No, 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 no. no. He's, he's like twenty he's, feet away yeah, from totally, me. Just, and he literally, an he literally <laughs> said this, and I don't. Gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and he literally, he literally texted me something to this extent. He said, "I think we were preaching on gener- We were preaching on generosity, and I remember that. I remember that because he said, um, no joke." I honestly am probably the most generous person in my circle. He goes, what do you do when you're listening to a sermon that isn't feeding you and doesn't really apply to you? <laughs> I, like, no, no, I, if so, people could see my face right yeah. now, I just, cr- like, I just so, cringe thinking so, like people. Okay, so there's obviously multiple weird problems with that text message. There, yeah, there's a, yeah, there's a lot, right? Totally. But one of them is... I will say this real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Just real. This is the little, the quick insight into the life of what pastors get (laughs) from people. (laughs) Dear Lord. And honestly, and honestly, I'm condensing what was three long messages. I get you, yes. um, Because he really elaborated much more than that. But I'm, yeah. So one of the things I've been trying to teach like our youth ministry and like in our Bible study classes that we do at the church and stuff like that is... um, the first reason you go to church is not to get something or receive something. You, you know, you don't, that, that's not the first reason. The first reason you go is because we're all called to be priests yeah. and priests brought a sacrifice. Yes. And first Peter says, we bring it now a sacrifice of praise. Yes, yes, so yes. the first reason we go to church is not to go like, you know, what can somebody give to me? What can I receive? But the first reason we go to church is I'm going to bring a sacrifice 
uh, of praise to Jesus yes, yes. and exalt him and lift him up. Yes. And so I think if like that's our mentality, we yes. never join, we never come together as a community with this selfish thing of like, the pastor didn't talk about what I want to yes. talk about. Yes. I hate this song, you know, yada, yada, yada. And it just turns, it's like, what, what can the church do for me? And yes. it's like, it's actually, you show up to church of what can I, how can I praise Jesus today? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and out of that though flows all the other things. Yes. But I think there's this mindset of like in Absolutely. church, it's like, you know, it's like you're going to the buffet and it's like, oh, yes. they're out of my favorite stuff today. Yeah, I'm not going to get filled up. Yeah. Crud, you know? No. Yes. And John Mark Comer talks about that. That's exactly. And he calls right. it uh, Christian Buddhism, where it's like, I go right. to church right, right. to improve myself. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. No, it's, it's, it's something that I think. Uh, it's something everybody listening right now. I mean, I, w- I would say it's one of the greatest joys ever as well. It's just yes. pouring your life into people. Like, like this is, I, I think when Paul says fruit that remains, I think if you go study that passage where Paul's describing fruit that remains, it is in the context of loving one another. I think fruit that remains is people. So I think the thing that the fruit that will remain from my life is the people I invested in at the end of the wow. day. And I think that there's great joy in 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 laying our lives down for one another. You know, so yeah. I so I just challenge people if you don't have people that you're sacrificing for and loving and pouring into, like you are you're, you're missing out. But but it can be daunting. One of the things that happens and Austin, you're um you're younger than Matt and me. A little bit. But there there's a there's a little bit in the younger generation, maybe even the older generation, but as a father, you have to get over a lot of hurdles that are thrown in your path. So what we, because there's a whole generation that's like, we don't need you. Like, and some of it's young, some of it's arrogance, but a lot of it is just survival. So it's like these young guys. And so I think that this is intimidating too, to say, Hey, come on, let's be a spiritual father and mother. And then I move towards you and you just throw me the middle finger and act like you don't need me. (laughs) Uh, like that's right, kind of like, right, right. like that's kind of like you know yeah. don't tell me what to do and like yes. I don't, and 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 I and much of it is much of it is some of it's pride but much of it is just survival because so much of these younger people they turned off the need it's still there so it's actually didn't turn it off but it was like um well if I need a father my father left when I was five so I learned to not have mm. that need. And I grew up my whole life thinking I'm fine without a father. It's almost a badge of honor is kind of what you're saying. Well, like, it's survival at some level. Okay. It's survival in that, it's survival that says if I have that need, that need goes unmet. Mm. So therefore I just act like I don't have that need. Mm. And then they come to the church and are like, you know what you need? You need a father. And they're like, mm, I actually don't need a father. Right. I've lived my whole life this far and I'm fine. Yeah, and it's not even like, it's not even arrogance. It's just like if I had that need, it went unmet. So, so therefore but, I just shut yeah. that need down. Here's one of the really practical things, thinking back about my dad, is that like literally the classic thing, he taught me how to tie a tie. So it wasn't like I sat down with my dad and just asked him, Dad, what's the meaning sure. of the universe? Sure. Dad, what's the um, you know, prophetic significance of the bronze kingdom in Daniel, you know, nine or whatever? Yeah. Like it was just it was simple things yes. uh that he did. So- that, that helped. I, I think though, um, I've never, th- that's a great perspective survival. Uh, Cause I haven't thought of that, but I remember talking to a student who had just graduated from our youth ministry and he was helping out a young life. And, um, when he graduated, he just s- started going to the church less and less and less and less and less to where it was like once a year, maybe, or something like that. And I just met up with them. Just, I'm like, dude, I haven't seen you around. And you know, and I met up with them and I asked them this question. I said, Hey, when I, cause I know how young life works and kind of their model, yeah. what they, you know, it's kind of like this funnel, you know, yeah. they try to get you to do, go to here and then this and this, and then they want, you know, their goal is to eventually to plug them into a church. You know? yeah. I said, do you have any students who have kind of got, you know, they went from club to this and they're, they're kind of like your small group now and you have a relationship with, he's like, Oh yeah. He's like, I've been, you know, f- met with them eight months ago and they're Christians now. And I'm like, awesome. And do you like encourage them to go to church? Like, and get plugged into like the body of Christ. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. And I, now I've known this guy for a really long yeah, time. Totally. I wouldn't say this to, um, you but relation, you have a relationship. I have a relationship. With I said, why would they do that? Cause you don't do that. <laughs> what do you say? And, and he, and he literally was just like, 
Yeah, I, and you know, and what I mean by that is not, hey, come listen to more sermons, although that is part of the thing, but it's like, you're supposed to do life yeah. with other Christians. And, and there's this thing of like, we have, we have this like false dichotomy or we, not a false, we, we create a dichotomy of like, we know what we should do. We just don't, maybe, maybe we don't feel like we need it. Right. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Anyways, it was just an eye That's opener awesome. where he was like, yeah, of course I tell, I, I'm trying to get these students to go to youth ministry. And well, I'm like, but you don't at do the end that. Of the day, it's cause stuff we, yeah. stuff we say we believe we don't actually believe, right. you know, we don't actually walk it out. I love that you're talking about the tie thing because for me, um, and you, uh, I think back to youth group. So my youth pastor and an intern who was probably 20 years old were like massive influences in my life. And as a 17 year old, I, I remember I remember this I remember sermons I I remember their example of going after God and being godly men but I remember them showing up yeah I could take you to my gym that I played in high school and I could show you at least the set the the area that they sat yeah I I I remember seeing them come in the gym mm-hmm. to watch me play mm-hmm. I remember the intern um, having me over to his house to play video games. I remember when I was, he was a baseball player in college and I was, I was playing baseball in high school. And I remember he would go and he would take, I remember going to a baseball field and he would soft toss mm. these balls against a fence for me and just let me take batting practice with him. Like these are the things that I remember right. is him being there. Yeah. And, and, I, and I just think we cannot overemphasize that fathering and mothering, although yes, it, absolutely has to do with like, um, you know, helping spiritual growth, spiritual growth. But yeah. so much of it is I am going to be there and I'm going to encourage you. And then windows open. And this is part of the thing of like, um, the, Ron Luce has a book called, uh, the reset. I think it's called the reset. And it's actually the, the, the book is about re, you know, how do you go after teenagers in this secular culture? But the first half is about parenting. It's a really great book on parenting. But he talks about that there are, with with teenagers, there are windows that open up. And he goes, when that window opens, you got to take advantage of it. Yeah. So he says, I always try to have one of my kids with me. He goes, I got to run to the hardware store. I'll ask one of my kids to come with me. I got to run to this. I, I'll ask one of my kids with me because I don't know when the windows will open. Right. Interesting. And, yeah. and so... But, but the, and I, I, in my own, my, in my own, my son, you know, he'd be like, hello, school, fine, fine. But every <laughs> once in a while, he'll like start opening up about something. And I'm in the car, like trying not to ruin the window moment. I'm like, don't screw it up. Don't screw it up. It's fragile right now. Okay. And I'm like, oh, I act like I'm not too Call interested. Ron but loose on speaker tell me, like, this is, I think this is a window moment happening right now. Don't <laughs> close. Don't close. Uh, but. But I think that that's the thing, like we want windows to open on our time in a scheduled coffee or whatever else. And I'm just telling right. you, if you're really going to be fathering and mothering people, <laughs> yeah. spend some time. it means uh, that you just have to spend time with them. And that's why I think you can only do with a handful of people. <laughs> Real quick, there was a, a student who came to the first, uh, to our youth ministry for the first time, like, I don't know, three years ago or something like that. And we, we broke into small groups after the service. So I'm sitting in the small group and at the end we're like, okay, hey, does anybody have anything we want, you know, you want us to pray for but just before we kind of wrap up the discussion? And this kid goes, he, first time, and he's like, yeah, me. And I'm, and I'm thinking, window, right? Like this is, yeah. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And this kid just kind of stood in the back during worship, yeah. just kind of like was off in space during the message. But man, like he's connecting and, yeah. and he goes, I'm going to ask a girl out after a youth group who's here. He goes, I would like prayer for how to approach it. He's being dead serious. Take your shot, player. And and I said, I said, I said, who is it? I actually, I don't want to, but he, but he he goes, I I can't say, he goes, but it rhymes with, and I'm like, oh, well, okay. I know that is, but anyways, that was, um, I thought that was going to be a window moment. It wasn't, but but even, but even then it's funny. Those are the things that they care about. I know. Right. The other thing, like that's what you care about in this moment. Okay. But yeah, yeah, I, I, I do think this is the big challenge that, that every believer should go. Do I have those people in my life? Right. Do I, do I have people that here's the thing too. If you don't have that, I think you, you've got to put it on, on yourself to go, I'm going to go and just be open 
and invite some people to speak into my life. Uh, because I think a lot of people come to church and go, well, I want somebody to notice me, you know, or care enough to invite me. But but it can go the other way. And most mentoring happens when, I, you know, I call somebody. I mean, uh, I think I told you the story, Banning, and I th- I've told our church uh, some of it too, but there was a moment where I just needed, you know, a father figure in my life. And I called up uh, Pastor yeah. Jess Strickland in a moment of just yeah. devastation for me. And I was like, hey, I just need somebody to speak into my life. And he's like, Oh, I've got time. I'm so glad you called. You're the greatest. I'm so, yeah. And he just laid it on love tank, just filling oh, up. Oh yeah. man. And, and he knew what it was. And so I think there's a place where we have to personally go, okay, um, I'm hitting some walls. I'm not growing. I don't have all the answers. So I'm going to go to a small group. I'm going to show up on Sundays. Of course, yes. I'm going to be around yes. some people. I'm going to I'm going to let some people speak into my life. I'm not going to act like I have it all together. I'm going to I'm going to go after that. Um, I just think that that's a real key for you know people listening to go. I, okay, I I want I want people to have a hunger for that in their life. Yeah, I think uh, you know. If, if anybody who's sane or reasonable and they said, I want to be a surgeon, they would never think, I'm just going to look up YouTube videos and watch other people do it, and then I'm going to go practice. You know, I'm, like, like they would go, okay, no, people go to school for a long time for this. They got to hit the books, but then they got to get their hands on, and, they, you know, they got to apprentice somebody and watch how they do it and do it with supervision. And, and it's like living and looking and being with Jesus is probably harder than being a surgeon because the enemy <laughs> is like your flesh and the devil and the world. And, and why would we assume that we can, we can do this journey, um, you know, by ourselves. Yeah, agreed. You know, yeah. agreed. So it, it's like, l- l- if we just take things to its logical conclusion on, on how we would study or prepare for anything difficult in life. If we need somebody to coach us. Apps, someone who, yeah, yeah. yeah that's good. I think it's, I, I, I think we should, I think we need to be honest with ourselves a lot more and just take inventory of our life and just ask these questions. Do I have people in my life? Let's just say you're married. Do I have people in my life that have actually access to my marriage and how's it going? Do I have people on my life that know my own personal secret struggles? Do I have people in my life that can tell me no, (laughs) that, that if they came, so, so we, I have such a high value for this stuff that we will submit things to people. So I've got key people in my life. And, um, I, I remember calling a spiritual father and we were about to buy a house. We actually were in escrow. We could pull out of it. It was in that phase. But I just called and said, hey, and we had the money. But after talking, but I came and I submitted, hey, what do you think? Should I buy this house? We do it with vehicles. I've submitted my entire budget. Walked with a guy for a long time who knew what I was spending on everything, like submitted my entire budget to him. He saw all my budget. He saw what we were spending money on. Like, so like, do I, are there people that know what my budget is? Are there people that know how I'm spending finances? Are there people that, and if they're not, that's like, here's what I'd say. You are limited in how far you're going to grow. You are limited. Yeah. You just are. And so if there, if there are areas in my life that don't have, and and I think this is, I remember, um, I remember this at the time, this years ago in our circles, a pretty well-known worship leader and a pretty well-known pastor, they were married. And she called me and said, Hey, we've been working with them, uh, just in ministry. And she said, Hey, I just want to let you know before anybody else. Um, but we're going to get a divorce. And I said, Oh, you're going to get, okay. Um, and my first question is, well, who have you talked to? Well, nobody, right. nobody. And they said this phrase. So I said, wait, wait, you haven't actually brought this in, into submission to anybody? Well, no. And this is the phrase. They said, we, we, uh, uh, we, we gave it our best and it just didn't work out. And I got off the phone. I've been married 10 years by then maybe. And I just got off the phone. I just realized, do you know if I would have just brought my best to my marriage, we, I wouldn't, I'm not trying to be dramatic. I probably wouldn't be married. Right. We definitely wouldn't be living in the same house. <laughs> like maybe we'd still be married, but just not living in the same house. And, and I, and I realized because, and I'm not going to be able to stand before God one day and say, Hey, I gave it my best. Right. Cause he's going to go, well, that's not actually what I required from you. Mm. 
I, like when you got saved, I put you in a big old family and it's not just your best that's required. It's the best of others that's required as well. And what I realized in my own life, and this is what I would challenge people. Do you have people involved in your finances? Do you have people involved in your marriage? Do you have people involved in your struggles? Do you have people involved in your life choices? Do you have people involved in this stuff right. that have been walking with you? Um, because what I realized was there is not an area of my life. Maybe I'd ask you the same, same question. There's not an area of my life that is thriving, blessed, or has any version of success that has not been influenced and touched by the best of others. Right. My marriage, my ministry, my personal life, my it's kids, beautiful. every, yeah. and the areas yes. where I would be, the areas, if I, if I looked and said, well, that area is dying, it's because... Yeah. Nobody else is involved in it. You're giving it your best. Yeah, because I'm giving it my best, and and I think this is a thing that every area I can say my marriage has made it 24 years and not just survived, but is blessed and thriving. We like each other more now than we did when we got married. And we've made it through really tough times, like really difficult things we've walked through. But it's because the best of Sherry's involved. Mm -hmm. It's because the best of uh, Danny's involved. It's because the best of Eric's involved. It's because the best of other people are involved. Yeah. No, that's great. So, Kate, I mean, is there any area of your life that you would look at and say, it's blessed, it's thriving, it's successful? Yeah. But it's because right. other people have been involved. Yeah. I'm right now... Um I've been, I've read a few books on church history because I'm writing papers on church history right now. And I just think if, and I'm, I'm talking about the, maybe the, the worst of it, but yes. if we, if we did, um, if they had the same attitude as maybe the average American yes. Christian, you know, today, yeah, the church would not have survived. No. That's not how they, that's not how they determined doctrine or how they came up with the new Testament yeah. canon. That's not yes. how they, that's not how they did mm -hmm. church. And like, like they won't even recognize how some people describe Christianity today, which they wouldn't even recognize it. They'd be like, yeah. it's Christian Buddhism. You know, it's like, and uh, it, it just like the church wouldn't be here yeah. yes. if they didn't do it together. Yes. Yeah. I like agree. period. Yeah. So, and the, and we need oversight. Yeah. And this is the thing, I, I mean, I, nobody nobody can take it from me, I have to give it, but I freely submit to people in my life be, because this yeah. is just, this is how, it's how it works. Like this is, you know, we just, that's, anyways, yes, I, I I'm remember, with you on all of it. I, I know we gotta wrap up here in just a minute or two. Yeah. But, um, oh, are, you, are you done? Austin and I were just getting started. We're well, just we do want people to listen to the oh. podcast. We're about to hit Daniel 7 next. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Okay, all right. Well, I guess Matt's <laughs> wrapping up. Uh, if you have ever done a podcast, you know, that's a kind clue to the guests. Make sure the mic's right here. Make sure the mic's right here. Uh, no, but uh, I remember one of, you know, I picked up a lot of phrases from you, Banning, um, over the years. One of the things I remember you saying, you were talk, <clears throat> talking about a spiritual father in your life, and you said everything because I've submitted to and followed yes. and, uh, everything that Bill has access to. Yes. I, I inherit mm. because um, that's how spiritual authority, the blessing of it Yes. Works. There's challenges in it because somebody does tell us no. Somebody says, hey, you should read this book. You need to stop doing that. I want to encourage in this. There's encouragement and challenge, all that. And, and that can grind against our independence. But at the end of it, you gain the ground that they took becomes yours and you're, you're, you're miles ahead. And yes. so I love, I love when you said that, that was yeah. really powerful. Um, and I think we just have to have this conversation about anybody who's going like, just what, what you said about, go get it. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately it'd be great if a father and a mother found you and, 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 you know, that'd be awesome if they came and just said, Hey, I want to pour into you. But at the end of the day, if we say this, I need people in my life. I need fathers. I need mothers. I need mentors. I need peers. Yeah. Like I need people in my life. Yeah. I am not powerless. I can make phone calls. I can show up to small groups. Right. I refuse to live in powerless mode. That's I good. can do something about this. And the amount of people I've sat down to ask father me that didn't work out. I remember sitting across from a pastor. I'm like, I would really love, like, I really need a father in my life. And it just went nowhere. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you know, but, but I'm not powerless. I'm going to get up and go again. I will. And, and then maybe you've been around because there are truly manipulative or abusive right. leaders. And, and, and I'm like, okay, okay. Well, it, it, you can't, you, you had a really bad meal. It does. Have you ever had food poisoning? 
It, it, you know, yes. I, I had a meal. I had food right. poisoning. Puked for two days. I don't give up on food. This is what we have to get in our core. Right. It says, no, I need elders and one another in my life. Okay, so maybe just one question to wrap up unless you had something, but... Oh, Matt, Matt wrapped up about 10 minutes ago, so it's probably, it's probably just Do you not know how preachers work? Just, Let's get the keys up here, Dom. It's just me and you right now. Let's get the keys Keep up going. here. Um, okay. Like not even here. So th this is just maybe more of a question for me. So um, we're about to, ne next Thursday night at our youth ministry, we're relaunching our small groups. We, we, we took a break after camp or whatever. And we have some new leaders coming on. We're super excited about it. Um, how do you, maybe, maybe like students, but at a 30,000 foot level, just people, maybe, um, people, it's not like people are going, oh yeah, no, I don't need that. But they just don't, they just, it's not, it's not on their mind. It's not it's on like their that. radar. How, how do you not convince them? Maybe is the best word, but how do you inspire, or encourage someone to go, okay, actually I'm, I'm 16 or I'm 56 and um, this seems to be part you of my. Just pointed me and say fifty six. I'm older I'm, than me now. I'm sixteen or yeah. I'm yeah. sixty seven. Yeah, old. But well, with how, young how do you get people going in that direction? I think with young people, it's obviously difficult. There's just a natural thing in them that wants independence, at least in, that wants independence, that wants to figure out, that thinks they know what they're talking about, all that type of stuff. <laughs> But that's why I think that's why I think we really have to, as fathers and mothers, there has to be a deep level of ownership. Like God's put you, like like my like my kids, my kids might just go like I don't want to like you're still I'm still praying for you, I'm still contending for you, <laughs> I'm still. So I think it starts with the leaders. I will say this: I think if we can get leaders hmm. who go, oh yeah, you may blow me off. But I am going to be in prayer. Right. I am going to be encouraging you. I'm going to be yeah. calling you and and begin to create the because they do want it, it deep down. And some people it need needs to see something. it over the course of a long time because we've had a yes. lot of people to tell us, I want to be in your life, and then they're not there for very long. Mm. So I do think if leaders can do it consistently through rejection. Yes. Then that, that and sometimes in teenagers' lives, and this is the depressing part, sometimes I'm planting a seed that won't bear fruit for a while. Right. It's just a hard reality. And they, they're definitely not going to tell you. Like, I remember Becky, brand new youth pastor, like just a, a few months in, she's she got all the, you know, our, there's just a handful of youth, and she's like, we're going to do some prophetic whatever, and they're just sitting there, you know, <laughs> arms crossed, you know. <laughs> And, and so like, doesn't look like they enjoyed it at all. Right. Well, the next day she talks to somebody, she's like, well, that didn't go well. They're like, that was awesome. What an incredible small group. <laughs> and she goes, are you kidding me? Dude, your face looked like you were having the worst time ever. And he goes, oh, that's just our face. Oh my gosh. That's just our face. Like that's going to be the title right. of a, a youth ministry book. Right. That's just our face. Yeah. But it's that type of thing that like, you just have to go, oh, they're not necessarily going to show it to you. Mm. It doesn't mean you're not getting through. That's and great. then great. I think that they're just long. They are longing for it, even though they resist it. Yeah. They are longing for it, even though sometimes it doesn't look like it. So how do you convince them? I don't know. I think just by creating an atmosphere of it, honestly, yeah. I just think by creating, I think kids are attracted to health, mm. even though they don't know it. So I don't know what it is, yeah. but this is healthy. I want to be around health. Right. <laughs> and I want to be around somebody who believes in me. And I want, and then all of a sudden there is that question of like, hey, I want to ask this girl out. And you're like, that is the dumbest thing ever. But hey. It's a window. Here, here's something where right. I can maybe connect with you on this thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's a lot of work. Yeah, totally. it's a It's a lot of work. All right, Banning, in the car right here, you told me two stories about your dad and how impressed you were. <laughs> Could we just maybe end with those quick? Here's two the stories? father. I was dry. I I remember as a kid looking back and like thinking, "Oh my gosh, my dad is amazing." He's he was so he was a police officer, so I already kind of thought like my dad is the man because he's a police officer. But I remember him coming home. I'm probably in first uh, first or second grade because we were in a certain house, and uh, he he ran down to the neighbor's house and came back. And uh, my my mom's like, "Hey, uh, dad, Larry, where were you?" He goes, "Ah, I had to jump the neighbor's car." And I remember thinking, oh, my gosh, my dad can jump over a car. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And I remember in my head, I, I still can see the picture of him jumping over the car. <laughs> and I'm like, 
that is awesome, Dad, that you could jump a car. And then the second thing that I thought was the most amazing thing ever was he would get so irritated when we were driving behind people who weren't going to the speed limit. So, like, the speed limit would be, you know, 40, 45 or whatever. Or, or he'd be like, man, what is going on? These guys are going 35. And I remember going, how does my dad know how fast they're going? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember so smart. I said, Dad, wow. it's incredible that he knows how fast that car in front of us is going. Like, I remember having these thoughts and like, <laughs> and dad is, my dad's amazing. <laughs> he could tell how fast that car is going in front of us. So this is the type of stuff, at the end of the day, we really do, like we're looking up. We are, we are longing for yeah. and looking up to yes. even though we may never admit it at first. Yeah. Great, great conversation. Great yeah. insight. Um, we can all be encouraging for sure. That's huge. I love that. Yeah. All right. Why don't you take us out, buddy? Yeah. The father figure. Smash that the- light. No, I'm just. That's uh, <laughs> 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 what they say at the end of YouTube videos. Smash that like button. Yes. Um, no, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to subscribe. Yep. Leave, us, leave us a review on podcasts. If you want to donate to the show, and no, I'm just kidding, we don't. My Venmo is That's no. Really Why are you stopping there? Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, yeah. Austin <laughs> underscore dash mold. I mean, <laughs> we love you guys. We'll see you in the next episode. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Banny.